Hey guys, I'm Jace. Welcome back to Farmstead Forge. Today we are building a stand for the swage block that I cleaned up in my last video. Um, this is some big old thick, 3 8 inch thick angle iron that I got from a loose hay head that we dug, that we got in our um, blacksmith shop haul video. Um, some of this is a little bit off size. This is a uh, two by two and a half. And this is two and a half by two and a half. And this is some three, uh, four by three inch stuff. Um, I'm gonna do this a lot, this angle iron a lot different than I've seen in other videos, as long as my plan goes the way I want it to. Um, and I'll explain later why I do that. So, I'm gonna do kind of like I did in my my last video. Um, I'm gonna tell a little story at the end of this about my grandpa that I mentioned in my other video. Um, when he was working at the Coffee Creek blacksmith shop as a young man, and what he came up with that really changed the way they did things. Um, and it kind of all coincides with this loose hay head and the way they put up loose hay and it's a very interesting story so I hope you enjoyed it at the end. Now my plan originally was to buff all of this uh, bright orange paint off of this stuff but it's pouring rain out right now <clears throat> and I had another one of these I took apart about 10 years ago for my backwards model M tractor that I made a grapple fork for and from what I remember, this is really good paint and it was really hard to get off. So I probably will just uh, buff off where I'm gonna weld, where I'm gonna grind and stuff like that. And also, if it goes to plan, it's going to have that kind of orange look, the little bit of rust, so it's, it looks old already, which it is. It's probably a 1950s era hay head. My plan is when somebody walks into my shop, they see this old, chipped up bright orange paint, this nice black um, blacksmith look, and it's just gonna be the focal point of my shop. When they come in, they'll see this this uh, swage block and really be drawn to it. And I actually had a guy in my shop just yesterday, and he was like a laser. This was sitting here on this table, and that's the first thing he went to. So be a great conversation piece in my shop, also that I get to use every day. Um, I'm gonna go off of my measurement, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, is I want this, when it's sitting upright, to be anvil height, and then when it's laid down, it'll be at a nice striking height.
So instead of having to angle iron the other way to hold it, I did like most guys do with box tubing, except I used the leg all the way up. Um, the thing I like about this is you can get a crowbar under it if you have to, to pop it up. Um, the ones they sit down in, they're real bare to get out. I, I probably will use a cherry picker eventually to kind of move this thing around. I was going to do a brace across here, but it's welded so long here. This is really thick 3-8 stuff. I just don't think it's going to be an issue, but if it is, I can always fix that later. So I got a little tool rack here and a little tong rack. And just the way this all boxed in too, it's all, it's all boxed in really nice under there so it's really strong. I thought I would just keep it simple. The fun thing about my awesome 1940s era floor is I can build something really nice and square on my welding table and then trying to find a spot that it sits flat is fun. But like my anvil, it will probably find its home and live there. So. Let's set the swage block in and see how she looks. There's some drift punch tongs and maybe we will do a video on those sometime. 
All right guys, it didn't come out quite how I saw in my head, but it still made a nice, nice heavy stand. This will be nice, I can tip this up and have it so it's not too high in working height. So, as I promised my grandpa, he was um, a young man running the farm, taking care of all his brothers and sisters because his dad had gotten severely wounded in the First World War. They were always looking for better ways to do things. They had these straight eight Buick cars, big old long motor in them, and they didn't seem to overheat as bad as the cars of that era. So he mounted the old um, loose hay rakes, the old dump rakes for pulling behind the horse, team of horses, and they'd drive through the hay field about 30 mile an hour and push up a big old bunch of hay. And he said he could do more in two hours with the old straight eight Buick car and the horse drawn hay rake than they could do with a team of horses in two or three days. And he did it out of the old Coffee Creek blacksmith shop. Times were changing back then and they were trying to figure out a faster, more efficient way to do things. And probably on top of that, they were short on manpower due to World War II. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the story. Hope you enjoyed this little stand. Um, if you liked it, give me a like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.